The scripture reading this morning is from 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives a prize? Run in such a way that you may win, and everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. They then do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable Therefore, I run in such a way as not without aim. I box in such a way as not beating the air, but I buffet my body and make it my slave, lest possibly, after I have preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. morning church and happy Sabbath to all of you. It's so good to see you and praise God that we have still opportunity to come and to worship him freely. Just before we continue, maybe just a few more announcements that we forgot to share with you uh, at the announcements time. This uh, afternoon we starting a choir. So at three o'clock if you would like to join a choir, please come. Uh, if you don't know how to sing, and if you are willing, don't worry. I was told, because I am willing, you can come, but I just would like to see picture without, and I'll come. So if you're like me, just come. And, and uh, main thing is that we spend some time together, that we see, uh, learn new songs, etc. And all who are interested are welcome to join at 3 o'clock. Prior to 3 o'clock, we'll have a lunch together outside, picnic lunch. So I hope that some of you uh, will stay and will spend some time fellowshipping and um, eating our lunches. And the third announcement that we forgot to share with you, perhaps you could read that in the bulletin as well. You know that there is... a. Um, sweeping uh, magpie, they do, they're doing their job now. So there is somewhere magpie nest close to the um, lawn mower shed. So I just would like to ask you, be careful if you go close there. Don't go without your hat or your sunglasses, because then and I, we had interesting Sunday, and we recorded some of the attacks. Um, so, but I hope after a few weeks they will, they will go. And this is natural things, as you, as you may know. Okay. Um, thank you, Michelle, for sharing the scripture reading with us this morning. Um, the title of my message today is Are you a player or... Are you a spectator? Okay. Uh, I like, and you should know it by now, I really like sports. Um, growing, back, growing up in Serbia, one of the things that I really, really miss from my childhood is those innocent days when we as children would play outside for the whole day. So who can remember those times? You see, I couldn't find the picture of my mom and myself, so I put this. The up picture looks like our childhood, isn't it? They really try, were trying to get us in the house. And the place when, where, where we were unhappy was actually in the house. And I remember clearly, I want to go out. Because I know my friends, they playing soccer outside. And now I have to sit inside. But nowadays it's a bit different, isn't it? 
the bottom picture says it all, so I, I'm not sure if you're a parent with this kind of experience trying to encourage your child to go out and to do something. Um, you all know that uh, this week, actually last week, we had the opportunity to watch the closing ceremony of Tokyo 2020 Olympic. And why are they calling it 2020? Because it's done just this year, because of pandemic they couldn't do it last year. And I'm just interested, interested to know how many of you watched some of the games at Tokyo Olympics? Yeah, we have a good number of uh, people who watch. So, yeah, I know that. Same like myself, I guess. I'm not really interested in all sports, but there is some sports that I, that I really like, and I was enjoying uh, watching. Um, some uh, interesting facts about the Olympics 2020, Tokyo 2020. Um, 206 countries had their representatives at the Tokyo Olympics, 206 countries. Um, there were about 11,000 athletes competing at the Olympics. And the most important thing is that Australia got how many medals? How many? 17 golds, 7 silver, and 22 bronze, which makes 46 medals. And what is really interesting and amazing is that this is the most successful year for Australian ever at Olympics. But I was so, so glad to see that out of these 2006 countries that came, Australia was... Which one? Sixth. That's a great achievement, isn't it? That's something really that, that, that we all love, I believe. And um, yeah, you all remember Emma McKean and her goals and, and other medals. That was really a pleasure to watch. And I was, as I was watching these Olympic Games, I had a thought about what sport has to do with Christianity. Is there any connection, is there any comparison that we can do between Olympics and between our Christian life, or I would say Christian journey? And when you think, and we will share this morning some of the comparisons, but you may think about some others, but it's amazing how many similarities we can find. And as Michelle read this morning for us, even Apostle Paul, to bring the point, he used sport competitions back in his time to tell us about the biggest, one of the biggest truths in Christianity. So I would like to share some with you today. Okay, you remember that man from the picture? If you don't, just go on, uh, on YouTube and, and, and watch how he celebrated uh, the achievement of, uh, of uh, the, 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 the girl that, that he coached. So Christian life is like a life of the athletes at the Olympic Games. In sports, you have a person which is called a coach. So, what is coach job description? What you would say? What, what the coach supposed to do? Yeah, coach supposed to train. Coach supposed to motivate. Coach supposed to encourage. Coach supposed to believe in a person that he or she is training. 
That's part of the jo job description for the coach. But one of the really important job for the coach is to choose who is going to compete and to represent the country. So, when I think about choosing, the Bible verse that comes to my mind comes from 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. The Bible tells us that we are chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. And I like this, you know, when, when we read, it sounds really good to our ears. We are chosen people, you know. We are royal priesthood. We have these special privileges. But there is a reason why we are who we are. The rest of the verse says that you may declare the praises of him who hold you out of darkness into his wonderful light. So why we are who we are? Because God has chosen us to declare the praises of him, to share with others how he took us out of darkness and brought us into his marvelous life. The coach, when, when he trained, when he, when he chose, he believed that the person will do some positive results. And in the same way, our coach, God, he is doing the same. In every game, as you know, and you don't need to be expert to figure this out, there has to be two sides. There has to be opponents, those that you are competing with. So, who is our opponent? Who is the one that we fighting with, if I can use that word? So, the Bible tells us in 1 Peter, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So we have, as a Christians, we have an opponent. Are, are we aware of that? That everything that God is trying to achieve, our coach is trying to achieve, someone is opposing. Someone is putting constant obstacles. It was interesting, you know, to watch uh, at the Olympics, some competitors, they wanted to win no matter what. And there was a, a marathon runner, you may, you may saw this on YouTube, who was running and then he came to, uh, close to the table where the water bottles were. Have you seen that perhaps? And what he was doing, <laughs> he was knocking over entire row of water bottles and ran off with the last one. Why? Because those who are behind, they won't have opportunity to have a drink. You see, Satan is doing different tactics, different strategies in order to stop people to achieve what God wants us to do. And we need to be aware of that. He is going like a roaring lion. Okay, next interesting thing that I was thinking about is when you look and watch sport, what most people who are present at the sport event do? They sit in the stands, is it? They are spectators. Okay, that's how 
it looked like this year. <laughs> there were no spectators, you know. But re we remember when these were full of people. And, you know, I'm really sorry for all these, you know, countries who prepared, you know, for the, for the big event and planned, and now they had to run it without people. And we still remember, you know, times at church, when churches looks like this one. It was full of people. But nowadays, where are the people? Not many in churches because of the pandemic and some other reasons, of course. But they watching, still watching, whether from internet or on TVs, like this, these Aussie uh, fans, fans they, they were watching on their tel uh, TV what their um, players do. So those who are watching, those who are spectators, how they function? Um, what, what, what they usually do? If their team meet their expectation, what the spectators do? They're cheering up, they support, they, they are happy, you know? But what about when their team doesn't meet their expectation? What do spectators do? Well, <laughs> they start to criticize, they start booing, they start to complain, they start to talk among themselves, you know, ah, that coach, he made or she made mistakes. If I was doing, I would put that play, I would not choose this one, etc., etc. Are you familiar with this? Have you ever been tempted to think like that? Yeah, I was watching Serbian, you know, some of the sports. I was thinking, wow, why he chose this player? There is many better. But... That's what the spectators do. Some people, they always know how the church should function as well. How church should run. Who should do what? Who shouldn't do? But if you ask some people to do something at church, oh, well, that's a different story. I know what needs to be done. But I don't, I don't want to do it. So how do you call these people? They are, my dear brothers and sisters, spectators. The question of the sermon today is, are you a player? Are you in a team? Or are you a spectator? Okay, the Bible tells us that we all should be in the field. What is the field? According to Jesus, the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. We all should be in the world. We all should do what we read at the beginning, telling others what Jesus has done for us. In Christianity, there is no place for spectators. Everyone should be involved. The other thing that I was thinking about Olympic is at every game there are some rules, isn't it? Without game, without rules, games wouldn't be able to run smoothly. But rules are there to help competitors or players to enjoy the game. And what's happened if rules are not followed? Yeah, depends what sport you were watching. But in some sport, there is such things as yellow card. It's a bit of warning. But if you keep doing what you're doing, what you may face after that? You may face red card. So what does it, what does it red card mean? <laughs> you are out. Yeah, for some... In some sports, you have two minutes out, and after two minutes, you can come back in, you know? But at least, if you don't follow 
the rules, you would need to face uh, consequences. So I'm thinking about our Christian journey. How about rules in the Christianity? Yeah, I know that some people, they are against the rules, but certainly there must be some rules. So what sort of rules? Yeah, let me mention just a few. Maybe, maybe the word rule is a bit, you know, big word when we talk about Christianity, but we're supposed to read the manual. We're supposed to follow the Bible. We're supposed to live according to the teaching of this book. Because if we don't, what will happen? We would need to face the consequences. And, and that's not the, you know, the threat. That's the fact. If you don't follow, as a Christian, what the Bible has to say, inevitably we'll need to face the consequences. If you don't follow the rule, the rule in Christianity, that you're supposed to pray, what will happen? Your spiritual lie will start dying. And eventually you will be spiritually dead if you neglect to pray. So there are some rules. There are ten commandments for Christians. You know, some, some Christians says, oh, don't worry about ten commandments. But ten commandments are actually helping us to stay and to grow in our Christian journey. So there are rules every way. Neglecting rules brings the consequences. How about time? Depends what sport you were watching this year at the Olympics. But there is wide range of time that the games last. Some games last for 90 minutes, like soccer. But some games, like water polo, there is four times eight minutes. Or some, like taekwondo, I think it's only six minutes. How about our Christian journey? How about time before Jesus comes? How long is this going to, to be? We don't actually know. But what we know is something that Paul is telling us in Ephesians chapter 5. It says, making the best use of the time. We as Christians are supposed to ma make the best use of our time. Because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Use wisely your time. What do you think? How important training is for the competitors, for the, for the athletes? I believe, and not the, you don't need to believe much, there is a lot of evidence that most of these athletes, they training hard to be able to come and to compete at the Olympic level. And most of them, you know when they start to train for the next Olympic Games. I was, I was uh, watching some of their interviews and few of them quiet, they said, okay, so what are you going now to do? You just got, you know, gold medal and so what is, what is on from now? Oh, look, I'm going to spend some time in quarantine, you know, that they had to go to quarantine. And after that, I'll go and spend time about a week or so with my family. And then they said, I will start focusing on Paris 2024. What is Paris 2024? That's next Olympic. So most athletes will start preparing themselves for the next Olympic Games, which is in four years, in three years' time from now. Training is very, very important. 
and they train for the years, as, as, as uh, we said. Okay, how about Christian training? Paul again, he said in 1 Timothy 4, 8, for physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promises for both the present life and the life to come. When talking about our spiritual training, Paul is telling the words, and you are very well aware of them, which says, be ready. When to be ready? It says, be ready in season and out of season. Make sure that you prepare yourself as Christian, because you never know what will happen. The Bible message is clear. Be ready. Constantly be ready. The competitors at the sport event, we could see, in order to be able to compete, they had to be geared up for the game. They had to have their shoes, sport shoes, shin pants, shirts. That's all what is designed for them to help them to go through the game. And does the Bible have to say anything? Uh, by the way, if you were watching, something just came to me. Um, you could see at one of the running uh, competition at, uh, in Tokyo, there was a man who was running. And as he was running, he lost his shoe. Have you seen that? So he kept ruddy, running, but because he didn't have that shoe, obviously he was slowing down. You see, everything is designed in sport to help competitors to get better, to achieve better results. How about our Christian life? Does the Bible say anything about gearing up in our spiritual journey? You all remember what Paul says in the book of Ephesians? In the book of Ephesians, chapter um, 6, from verse 10. Finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full arm of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, Take up the full arm of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your, your leons, loins with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet in the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. So what the Bible says, gear up yourself. Put the helmet of salvation. Make sure that you put the whole armor of God as you traveling towards the promised land. Okay, I love this picture. Some of you may know who these two gentlemen are. They are really good. I was enjoying watching Patty Mills and Joe Ingalls as they were going towards the bronze medal. And it was joy really to see when they, when they won. But Basketball is team sport, but there is some individuals who, who, who compete, like tennis players in the singles, Ash Barty. But behind every 
player, individual prayer, a player, there is actually a team. No one can do anything alone. We are not islands. We are created to function as a team. You know, in the parable of the talents from Matthew 25, Jesus said that everyone received talents. One received five, another one received two, and the third one received how many? Only one. And what they did, you know the story. But what I like really is that says that everyone received according to their ability. So the question is, what do you do with your talent? What do you do with your gift that, you, you, that God has given you? Are you using this for his glory? Or you dig up the hole and hidden your talent? These competitors at the, at the Olympics, they came and they showed their talents, what God has done for them. And at the end, what's happened at the end of the game? There is a prize. Those who are winners, they receive a prize. And this is a wonderful picture, isn't it? We really love it. They live for that moment. The whole nation is watching to see actually this picture. So does the Bible say anything about the prize for Christians? Are we going to receive any prize at the end? The Bible tells us that, the, that Christians will receive the crown of righteousness. Paul says in 2 Timothy 4.8, There is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day, and not to me only, but to all who love his appearing. Are you living for this day? To receive the crown, uh, the crown of righteousness. If you believe in Jesus, if you keep doing what you know that he wants you to do, if you keep sticking close to him, that will be your experience as well. And of course, at the end, when everything is done, there is a big celebration. Everyone rejoice. Because what has been planned is achieved. And yeah, as we, as we said at the very beginning, 46 times Australian competitors have had opportunity to rejoice and to enjoy because of the medals. But how about our Christian life? What the Bible says about great joy at the end when Jesus comes? The Bible tells us in Matthew 25, 21, that when Jesus comes, he will say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter the joy of your Lord. My brothers and sisters, as I finish these thoughts, I just would like each one of you to think where we are in our spiritual journey. Are we in the team? Are we supporting others? Are we trying to use our God-given talents for his glory and for the blessings of others? Or are we perhaps just spectators? I would like today to invite each one of us to be not a spectator, but to be part of the team and to work together as we travel together towards the promised land. So that's my prayer for each one of us today.
Amen.